In late 2019, the inaugural edition of the Brest Atlantique got underway. A transatlantic non-stop race covering a distance of 22 and a half thousand kilometers. Starting and ending in Brest, France, via Rio de Janeiro and Cape Town, it would test even the most experienced of sailors. The race featured four trimaran boats. Made from carbon fiber, the boats were 32 meters in length and would be skippered by a two-man crew. Each crew would be accompanied by a media man who wouldn't be allowed to partake in the boat's performance. Brest Atlantic is a fabulous race because the boats are fabulous. They are very speed boat, multi years. They fly, so it's the first uh, characteristic of this race. And the race is very long one. You can say around uh, 28 to 30 days racing. So it's a lot of job for the crew to do that with such a huge boat. Also to, to start from Brest is a big story in Brest because uh, Brest uh, is the best place to go to go in the Atlantic and I think um, the town of Brest is very proud to have this boat in the town today. The race included some of the best known names in world sailing with Thomas Coville, the former record holder for the fastest solo circumnavigation of the world, competing for Team Sedebo Altim 3, alongside Jean-Luc Nelias. Team actual leader was skippered by the duo of Yves Le Bavec and Alex Pella. To prepare this boat or this race, we do a lot of uh, some races in the on the spring in French Brittany and uh, in the summer, like a fast net race and these kind of races. Uh, we do a long uh, trip. It was the qualification. It was uh, 1,000 miles before this race. This is the first long race double-handed in this kind of boat. Personally, I have a good feeling with the boat and we, eat. we are so happy to, uh, to do the race. All the same for me. <laughs> <laughs> the Maxi Edmund de Rothschild crew was made up of France's Franck Camas and Charles Codrelier. The main problem on this kind of boat, you can capsize. We are going to sail during 30 days and maybe 80% of the time there will be enough twin to capsize if we do a mistake. So you have this always in your mind. If I do a mistake, it's a really part of the stress. Completing the lineup were Team Trimer and Massive, which featured the duo of Francois Gabert, the current world record holder for the fastest solo circumnavigation of the world, and co-skipper Genol Gahine. At the end of the race, we will be the sailors that has the biggest experience of uh, flying above water. We know that we, we can sail more than 40, 45 knots. We, we're close to 50 knots sailing on this boat offshore. And the, one of the questions is, are we able to have this speed for one day, two days, 10 days, 30 days? And uh, could we go so fast for, for one month? And that's, that's one of the targets we have. Brest Atlantic is a big race on the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic. Only two marks. First one to go close to Janeiro, to around the island of Cagaras, that will let on port side. And after they go to South Atlantic, to go close to Cape Town, to around uh, Robben Island, and coming back directly to Brest with no stop. So it's a huge race on huge boats. With the start delayed for two days, the Brest Atlantique finally got underway on the 5th of November, with the four crews facing challenging conditions as they headed towards the Spanish coast. After a week of sailing, it was Maxi Edmund de Rothschild who led from Trimaran Massive as they crossed the equator. With Sedebo Altim III, an actual leader in third and fourth, respectively.
With the Atlantic conditions taking their toll, both Team Massive and Maxi Edmund de Rothschild needed to pit in Rio for repairs, with Massive needing a spare rudder and Rothschild fixing their damaged daggerboard. Team Sedibo crossed the mark in second position, while actual leader were the last to pass the first marker of the Brest Atlantique. Following these setbacks, the fleet headed towards the second mark off Cape Town, with Maxi Edmund de Rothschild leading the way. Actual leader rounded the mark in second place, while Team Massive had to pit again for more repairs. Sedebo Altim 3 arrived in Cape Town with significant damage to their boat and had to drop out for safety reasons, bringing the Brest Atlantique to a disappointing end for Tomas Coville and Jean-Luc Nellies. As the race progressed, it was Maxi Edmund de Rothschild who continued to set the pace as they headed north. The race for second place was neck and neck, as Team Massive and Actual Leader both opted for different routes, with Massive taking a western tact and Leader taking a more direct approach north. Having led for all but three days they were racing and having covered a distance of 31,600 kilometers, Maxi Edmund de Rothschild crossed the line on the 4th of December in a time of 28 days, 23 hours, 24 minutes and 46 seconds to claim victory in the Brest Atlantique. It was a long race, it was tough sometimes, there's been a fight uh, until Cape Town. We had some issue but, uh, but at the end uh, the way back was a bit long and uh, soft, so it was okay, and we are not exhausted. But I think because we also were very well prepared and, uh, and because the boat didn't have so much issue, so yeah, we just sail and uh, yeah, sailing on this boat is just pleasure. <laughs> Team Massif and actual leader continued their battle for second right down to the finish. In the end, it was Massif who crossed the line in Brest Harbour in second place, finishing just over four hours ahead of actual leader. Happy to, to arrive in Brest, uh, finishing this race, finishing second. We have a lot of uh, damage on the boat and it uh, was quite impossible to play for the first place but we have a good game with actual uh, to fight for the second place and we, we get it so we we happy with this. Despite finishing last of the three remaining boats, actual leader was the only vessel not to take a pit stop throughout the entire race. Whilst there was celebration amongst all those who completed the race, only one team could claim the 2019 Brest Atlantic Trophy. Very happy and very proud for the team. We knew this boat was a success, we knew this boat was a fantastic boat and uh, it was time to prove it. And, uh, so we are very happy. It's uh, four years of work and it's a big success, I think it's very important for the team.